why would I work for you instead of staying in the military? I'm assuming as a private contractor, you probably have way more to offer than the military does at because this point, right? Because they, they like the chance to do it right. What does that mean? Bec- in a non-bureaucratic, non-nonsense way. I remember being a Hummer mechanic, and we would order parts, and I would look at the number, and I'd say, yeah, this part is $800. I'm like, what is, why is this $800. And you go look it up. You talk to Mercedes or who you, you know, yeah, it's a $70 part. Yep. We're spending $800 on, yes, we are. What are you talking about? It's kind of what happens here. So is that kind of what you were talking about where money was being wasted? Um, yes. I, like our first State Department job, which didn't come until probably 03 or 04, we, um, we, you know, we'd been training high-end special operations units. We knew what we were doing. We mm-hmm. knew our costs. Yep. The first price we submitted to State, they said, we can't accept this. I said, why? It's so low, it's not deemed credible. Mm. That's, Got it. That's the idea. I understand. H- have you been to Drive Tanks, the, the facility in uh, San Antonio? Drive Tanks? Well, no. I, have, uh, I used to have tanks on my farm. Have you heard of Drive Tanks? No. Okay, so this place is called Drive <laughs> Tanks. One day, crazy story, Come I'll on. tell you. I had kids. I had two British armor <laughs> personnel carriers. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you Some crazy people go st- for hay rides. We had tank rides. But you see, you look American. You are American. I'm from Iran. So one day, <laughs> uh, I take my kids. These guys from Drive Tanks reach out. They say, Pat... We love the content. We want you to come out and bring your kids. We're going to have a lot of good time. We're going to drive over cars with tanks. We're going to blow things up. You're going to do 50 cal. You're going to say, I'm like, all right, let's go. We get into, uh, we get a big uh, sprinter. We get the guys. We go. I took both of my boys at the time. This is five years ago. So my oldest would be seven. Youngest would be five. We go there. There's Navy SEALs. There's Delta. There's Special Forces, Fifth Group, everybody. They're there. And you're making bombs. You're driving on tanks. You're doing all this stuff. It was an incredible experience. If a person's never gone to drive tanks, you got to go to. It's a great experience. My kids come back. That next week, my son goes to school, the younger one, five-year-old. Teacher says, how was your weekend? She says, it was great. So what did you do, Dylan? My daddy and I made bombs, and we blew buildings up. I get a call from school. The teacher says, your son can't say stuff like this because I'm from Iran, so they're freaking out. She said, well, what did my son say? So well, see, your son said you and him made bombs and you guys blew up buildings. I said, my son's not lying to you. <laughs> well, well, sir, what do you mean you guys made bombs? I said, man, we went to this place in a military facility. These are trainers, drive tanks. Here's the video. Oh, my God, he scared the kids off. I said, this is an innocent kid. He's just giving you experience. Anyways, we had a great time with it. I ask you this because was this kind of like a hobby or was it a business? Did you see it being a billion-dollar business? Was it kind of like, let's see what it's going to turn into? Was it a clear vision? You saying, I think we can turn this into a billion-dollar empire. I, another formative moment was seeing the incompetence and corruption of the UN in Bosnia, right? yeah. the Yugoslav Civil War, and, um, you know, UN... Let forces letting people just get slaughtered at Srebrenica. So yeah, I had, um, and even seeing the nonsense what happened in Rwanda, UN run their mouth, uh, and the the two, the Houthis kill. Sorry, no, the um, Tutsis and the Hutus. Yeah, the 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 Hutus kill a million Tutsis with basically farm tools in four months in Rwanda. Come on, so. There, I, I definitely saw a need for private peacekeeping as a way to displace the UN, which was, in my mind, and proven corrupt, immoral, useless. Beyond useless, they're, they're malign. In your mind, are you sequencing the process of how this is going to work? Yeah, we're going to start off as a training facility. We're going to get the word out there. We're going to get the right training in. And then all of a sudden, we're going to be a contractor, and we're going to do it better than the military is doing it. Did you kind of foresee that happening? Yes, and seeing what Executive Outcomes did, which is a South African mm-hmm. PMC that was formed in the early 90s, uh, the great work they did in ending the war in Angola and, and literally saving Sierra Leone from a, an, almost an ISIS-like force called the Revolutionary United Front. They cleaned it up in 120 days and then um, were forced to leave by idiots at the State Department, only to have the country retaken again by the same bad guys. Um, I knew there was a place to do peacekeeping and stability operations infinitely better than what the status quo was. Are you and 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 in doing so, saving millions of people from unnecessary suffering? When you're talking to the first three guys you hired, are you selling them that vision? No. Okay, so they don't know. They're no. simple wanting to come over to you is the fact that five and ten meter target was we're going to run a fantastic training facility. 
and you get to innovate tactics, techniques, and procedures. And we wanted to be a place where, because <clears throat> at that point, the SEAL teams, the the JSOC units were not doing a whole lot of close quarter battle and door kicking and that stuff. The, actually, the people to really learn from then was L.A. SWAT. They taught the best hostage rescue. L.A. SWAT. Yeah. So we brought Ken Thatcher, um, senior guy from L.A. SWAT, out oh. to teach courses at Blackwater. And so we wanted to make Blackwater the repository, the crossroads of tactical expertise. Got it. Okay. So... 400, 800, 1.2 million, 1.6 million, 12 million, 35 million. When did you get the contract where you said, guys, this thing's about to change? What, uh, I know you said 9-11, but when was mm, it when they actually No, made- it was actually after the USS Cole was blown up in October of 2000, right? Navy ship blown up by a suicide boat, killed 17 sailors. Yep. They were holding unloaded weapons that they hardly ever fired before because the Navy viewed firearms training as too dangerous. So they're shooting laser simulators. So the Navy came to us having, because we were training lots of soft units, and they said, could you train sailors to protect their ship, retake their ship, all the elements of small arms, which the Navy had basically abrogated knowledge and responsibility of. So this is still training, though, right? You're still not deploying. No, correct. Okay. So when but that was, a, that, was a seven, that was a $7 million a year contract. I got you. Real, That's big. Which is real for us. Now it's official. Now you're sitting there saying, guys, something happened. But it's still training, right? Yep. At, at this point, how many former military vets, SEALs, I'm talking high-level soldiers do you have? When you got the $7 million contract, how many do you have? For, th- for that kind of training volume, it's probably 30 instructors. 30 instructors. Okay. Because we had to stand up facilities in Jacksonville and Groton, Connecticut, and... San Diego and Bremerton, Washington. Okay. So now that's that's happening. You got the $7 million. It, it, what's the next call to say, hey, we actually need a private military contract to send soldiers out? When was that? After 9-11, a high-level job for the CIA in Afghanistan. How big Two, was that? Uh, that was 18 guys. 18 guys. Yep. Got it. 18 guys because the military didn't want to do it with less than 250. The they, military didn't want to do it. They asked, the mili- they asked the military to do that. And they right? wanted 250 people. They said, we will not, will not do it with less than 250 people. You were able to do it with 18 people. Yep. Okay. So when, when that call comes in. And then the next one after that was a very remote, very important base um, that enabled a lot of GWAT activity. And there was 166 soldiers there, and we replaced it with 25 of our guys. 106 they, with 25. They, in that case, they had 28 soldiers mm-hmm. in an infantry platoon mm-hmm. and 138 people supporting the 28. And we could send 25 guys, five of which were dual-hatted, to keep the power, the water, the sanitation, the comms, and the food running. It's a different model. I can send 30, 40, and 50-year-olds that have a lot of experience and can fix a generator, run a radio, and, and fix a desail pump. Um, versus the military sends lots of 18 and 20 year olds that can do barely one thing. So, what per, at this point, what percentage of your business is intelligence? What percentage is muscle? What percentage is protection? Um, the cost of overseas of deploying guys to weird places that cost gets high fast, so that starts to skew the revenue. But um, at you know, as we we're growing, it was still probably. 40%, 50% training, 50% security. And then we bought an aviation business in 2003, Presidential Airways, a niche little business. It was some former TF-160 guys, Richard Pear, Tim Childry. Um, and they had the licenses in one leased aircraft. And we bought that. And um, six years later, we had 73 aircraft mm-hmm. that we owned and operated. Everything from a 767 to a Super Tucano light attack aircraft that was fitted out with a FLIR, uh, a G-Box, a cell phone intercept system, geolocation, Link 16, so we could talk to all the fast movers, and uh, and it could drop laser-guided bombs. It was magnificent, and, and we actually <laughs> we put that on contract to JSOC as a way for them to do very cost-effective close air support, cheaply. And uh, boy, the big Air Force, big Navy, smashed that. Because anything 
that threatened the primacy of the trillion dollar F-35, they wanted nothing to do with. Now, so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.